Hi gang, Rob here. It is the evening of 26 March 2020. Day two of stay at home order from the governor of Indiana. Not a big deal for me. I'm home all day anyway. I just walk in the basement, open the shop, and I'm good to go. And we're good to go tonight because what we're about to do involves no intimate personal contact, nothing inside of six feet. And everything that's going to change hands will probably be in the postal system long enough for any lingering virus to die. That said, everything will be sanitized with high purity ethyl alcohol. <laughs> uh, it's time for a knife sale on Thursday night at 9 o'clock on the Apostle P channel. And we are going to have one by golly. <clears throat> Please do heed my admonition from the Heads Up video. If you don't have the liquidity to prudently purchase collectible cutlery right now, please don't. Just be a spectator. It's okay. We'll all survive. So will you. That said, we've got some pretty cool stuff tonight. Before we get into it, a little bit of housekeeping. If you're about to purchase a knife on this sale, please be familiar. That means understand what they say. With the terms of the sale, I'm going to post them on the screen for you in just a moment. They'll also be reprinted in the description underneath this video. Also in the description above the terms of the sale will be three links. The first one is my Primer for Buyers video. That is a great piece of content for first-time buyers on this sale. Gives you the whys and wherefores of what we do and how we do it on this sale each week. Second link is to my FAQs for consigners video. If you're interested in moving some of your cutlery collection along and you don't want to mess with selling it yourself, it tells you how to hook up with me so I can move it along for you. The third link, as always, will be the rates and services video for the Apostle P Knife Service the original precision sharpening service for the online knife community. Below all that, below the links, below the terms, you will find the list of inventory for tonight's sale, complete with timestamps to the video and pricing. Number to the left of the slash is your as-is price. Number to the right, your as-sharpened price. There will be next day sharpening this week for the first six knives purchased to be sharpened. If you buy one to be sharpened and it's outside those first six, It'll be about four weeks before it ships. I think that's about it. It's time to get to the sale. After you view, digest, and understand the terms. Here you go. All right, let's get to it, shall we? First up, we're going to start with the lone survivor, the one poor pathetic leftover from last week. Thank you guys for rocking it last week, by the way. Only one knife goes unsold. It is this little beauty in this beautiful box. It's the Spyderco Positron in orange. The brainchild of one Brad Southerd comes to us by way of Taichung, Taiwan. Just look at that beautiful handle. A great mixture of angles and curves. Highly polished orange G10. Angular profile. Curved crown handle. Man, just beautiful. It's got a ball bearing flipper system. And that very functional truncated banana by Brad. S35VN is your blade steel, beautiful Taichung satin finish. Blade length is 3 and a 16th. Handle length is 4 inches. 
you have your reversible left or right tip up, deep carry paper clip clip, nested locking a leaf in stainless steel, I believe. Very nice flipping action and nice and smooth, by the way. We'll call this near mint to like new in box. The only reason I hesitate to call it like new is because. You guys know orange picks up the slightest little bit of debris. You might see a little darkening in the jimping in the backspacer, but it's really a dialed in little knife. Centering's dead down the middle. Lock up and flipping action. Beautiful. Great little low profile flipper. Uh, these are discontinued and out of stock. Uh, there is one site I found that had them at least last week at 290 believe it or not 290 that was a lot more than they were when they were in stock um, We ran it last week at 130 got no takers dropped it to 110. It's still here Somebody gets this positron this week for 99 bucks $99 119 if you'd like it with my edge Next day sharpening available if it's one of the first six this week that's the Positron from Spyderco. Next up, the first of the fresh inventory. It comes in the diminutive black, red, silver, gold, and white box. This is, oops, backwards. This is the Spyderco McBee Plain Edge. I hope so. It's kind of tiny. Check this thing out. The little Spyderco designed by J. McNeese. It's pretty cool. It's a little tiny titanium frame lock. Look, the standard hourglass clip almost as long as the knife. You could probably money clip this, couldn't you? Interesting little crater milling details in the pivot heads and the relief for the lock bar. It has sort of a Spidey Chef-esque, kind of an acid stonewashed titanium finish. There's a pretty nice little trail that runs right from this screw, just so you know. And then it's got this cute little <laughs> Batwing Warncliffe Sheep's Foot thing. That gorgeous Taichung Mirror Stone Wash. Blade Steel is CTS XHP. Blade length on the McB is 1 and 9 16th. 2 and 5 16 is your handle length, so super efficient blade to handle ratio. It's a little two finger knife, great little utility knife. Uh, lock up is rock solid. It's got the carburized Taichung lock face. Beautiful centering. Rock solid little unit. Very cool little tiny knife. Um, let's see. Map pricing on this knife. If you find it on the interweb brand new will be 140 This one could be yours for 100 bucks, And then 120 if you'd like it with an Apostle P Edge. That can be done tomorrow, Friday the 27th, if it's one of the first six knives purchased to be sharpened this evening. About four weeks if it's not. That's the Spider Co. McB. Next up, we have a knife that is built like a tank. From Zero Tolerance, we have the 0566 Charlie Foxtrot Hinderer Design in carbon fiber. Yes, the ZT0566, sort of a uh, an entry level ZT, but a really well built knife. You have a carbon fiber show side scale, a stone washed stainless steel frame side, lock side, hinder lock bar stabilizer, no need for a lock insert because the lock bar is steel, deep carry, reversible tip up clip. It's, well, I guess it's four way reversible. Look at that. As as true with the hinderer design. So we have a very hinderer blade. Did you see how that flipped out of there? Why? Because it's a speed safe knife. You bet it is. Spring assisted. This one in L Max. What's that serial number? 2039. You guys can probably read it better than I can. 
gorgeous stone wash on that three and a quarter inch blade backed up by a four and one eighth inch handle super efficient blade to handle ratio on parkerized standoffs there's your lock engagement I expect it to be rock solid and it is blade centering pretty much right down the middle it might favor the lock side just a hair it's kind of hard to tell in this light you could probably loosen the pivot a little make it dead true if you wanted great great uh, speed safe flipping action we're going to call this near mint to like new in box it's discontinued it's out of stock everywhere i found pricing on these knives completed listings on ebay complete actual transactions on ebay between 128 and 250 believe it or not don't know who'd pay 250 for this knife I do know that you can buy this one for one hundred dollars a hundred bucks like it is 125 if you'd like it with an Apostle P edge and that can be done tomorrow next day sharpening available if it's one of the first six about four weeks if it's outside the first six that's the ZT 0566 CF from Zero Tolerance. Next up, man, I think every ZT collector has one of these. If you don't, you need one. We're going bold, and we're going bold with the Dmitry Sienkiewicz Design ZT0452 Charlie Foxtrot in S35VN. Carbon fiber scale, as the CF denotes. And there's that carbon fiber for you. you got your stylized <clears throat> Sinkovich pivot, just a T8 to operate it. Titanium frame lock, kind of a shorty deep carry reversible clip. Works well even on such a long knife. Steel inserted titanium frame lock. Fingers on lock bar and out she flips with no def lock. That's a big deal. S35VM blade steel. Blade length on the 452 is 4 and 1 16th inches of sort of bayonet inspired drop point awesomeness. There is your lock engagement. Fairly early and rock solid. Drop and shut, perfect centering. By the way, behind that 4 and a 16th blade is a 5 and 3 16th handle. Pretty perfect example. I detect no edge wear. Uh, we'll call it near mint to like new in box. These knives might be close to discontinuation. I found one site that has them on clearance for $190. Bucks. Uh, eBay completed listings in this blade steel with this handle. Are selling between 180 and 220 still this one can be yours and it's a darn fine example for 170 170 and then 195 I'm sorry 190 if you like it with an Apostle P edge I forgot it was in s35 VN so 190 sharpened on the ZT 0452 CF next up Oh golly, from Chris Reeve Nines, we have a small Sebenza 21 plain edge, plain handle in Singo. Here's your birth card. Tells us the knife was born December 21st, 2017, and it is a new hardness spec 59 to 60 Rockwell S35 VN blade. Go shopping for these brand new right now. What do your websites say? Discontinued and out of stock. Yeah. Hard for us to believe. You know, we saw the Sebenza 25 come, be morphed into the Inkosi, and the 21 survived. The 31s are about to pop. In fact, I've got one coming in for sharpening and review right now. The 21's going away, boys. It is going away. 
I'm not sure if we're going to see an Insingo bladed 31 or not. This one is a darn fine example. Um, this is the same consigner as the large 21 from last week, and it's just in exactly the same condition. I got a couple little trails on the on the pocket clip, but those are really the only trails on the knife that I could find. An unmolested blade that's actually pretty sharp from Chris Reeve, and a thumb stud with very, very little wear on the tip. There is your lock engagement. Very normal and very solid. Blade centering is beautiful and snappy detent. Free drop in action. On the bushing from the factory, perfectly tanned. Uh, <laughs> price on these, if you can find them, good luck. $375, brand new. Hey, your favorite web retailer. This one can be yours. With the first little hickey in here, three hundred dollars, three hundred bucks, three twenty if you'd like it with an Apostle P edge. That is the Chris Reeve Small Sabenza in Singo. Next up, we have one of those beautiful wooden boxes. Hoback knives, tools inside. Inside the box resides the Hoback Knives Literature, signed by Jake Hoback, Psalm 23. That's some good reading for times such as these, my friends. You might want to dust off that Bible that's holding up the bathroom window and flip to the middle, the middle of the text, and you might find the book of Psalms, and clearly marked will be Psalm 23. Give it a read during the pandemic. There are your specs on the Hoback Quayback, 9 inches overall open length, 5.3 inch handle, 3 and 3 quarters inch blade, CPM crew wear, 3 sixteenths thick, sandblasted and stonewashed. Then you get a titanium and carbon fiber handle with stonewashed finish. Let's see the knife. <laughs> there you go. Ooh, oh, look at the way the weave of that carbon fiber plays with the fluting, the milling, and that handle scale. Love it. I also love that Jake Hoback loves lefties. The clip reversible. Okay, so not only do you have a carbon fiber scale, you have a carbon fiber inlay. On the lock side, one little note, I believe there's been a little bit of a, I think there might have been a scratch in the carbon fiber right here that the owner has lovingly buffed out. You just see a little variation in the pattern right there. Uh, if you, I didn't point it out, you'd probably never see it. A couple extras on this knife, the DLC backspacer. And the DLC clip. Uh -huh. So let's flip this baby out of here. There is your quaking shaped blade from Jake. There's your gorgeous stonewash finish. Now this knife has been user touched up. Um, it's not the best looking edge in the world, but it's still pretty doggone sharp, I gotta say. You get the steel inserted titanium frame lock with the Hoback rolling detent. This one adjusted just like I would want it. It takes a little bit of a little bit of shimmy shake to get it to drop shut. Okay. Blade centering is dead perfect. Lock engagement right where you want it, and it's rock solid. I'm going to call this one near mint in box. Um, so the price of this when it was new was $675. Then he's got $115 in upgrades, the DLC backspacer and clip. So total price 
for this knife was $790 new. And this is the Mark IV Quayback Ultra High End Production Series, UHEP. Okay, $790 new. Your price, $480, $480. And then $505 if you like it with my edge on it. Let's see, Hoback, Quayback, Mark IV, UHEP in crew wear. What a beauty. Next up, this might be the coolest Kaiser knife I've ever seen. And Kaiser didn't get there by themselves. Really cool knife. This is the Kaiser KI4508 Critical. It's going to come with inner box and pouch. No uh, cream colored white outer box. Okay. Here's the Critical. Check it out. That is a custom anodized titanium handle. Look at all the anno work on this thing. The handle, the pivot, the clip. Unbelievable. So the critical is, of course, a steel inserted titanium frame lock, ball bearing pivot. This started its life as a flipper. The thumb studs are also a custom, the thumb stud is a custom addition. And it has had the flipper tab deleted. The swedge has been reground to be more dramatic. A really cool customized critical. You've got a three and three, three and three quarter inch blade, a five and one sixteenth handle. There is your lockup, and it is rock solid. Perfect, smooth. I keep reaching for that flipper tab, but it's not there. Superb thumb stud action. I mean, superb really really cool knife um, this knife brand new from any web retailer would have been two hundred and five dollars okay two oh five and then who knows who knows what all this custom work costs probably another hundred bucks so if it tickles your fancy if it hits your aesthetic button it's going to be a great deal I'm going to classify it as near mint. It's probably, it's basically an unused knife, and I think it's got a bit of a polished edge on it. Yeah. Just a heavily customized knife. How about uh, 160, 160, an S35VN, by the way. 160 like it is, 180 sharpened. And you can have that done next day if you're one of the first six tonight. About 30 days, 28 days if you're not. Mm, what a cool knife. Next up, why did they ever discontinue this knife from Spyderco? It is the vaunted, the awesome Gale Bradley folder designed by legendary blade sports champion Gale Bradley from Weatherford, Texas. Produced by Spider Coast Tai Chung plant. You got the carbon fiber over G10 laminate scales. You have the heavy stainless steel liners that are proud and polished. You have that gorgeous drop point blade. What what blade steel is it, Rob? Well, y'all know that. It's CPM M4. There's Gale's Maker's Mark of Weatherford, Texas. Uh, yeah, so you got... I don't really find any black spotting on this M4. It, it might be a little gray, a little cloudy gray, maybe, a little. Just from sitting around, but not, not rusty. There's your lockup, which is just about where all Gale Bradleys are. Almost the full lock bar engages the blade tang, but not quite, just a little over 50%. Nice centering. Detents on these are never super robust. They don't 
doesn't need to be there so much lock bar tension. This is a knife designed to cut stuff. It's not a, it's not a uh, movie watching couch flipper. This is a hard working man's knife. And what a legend. What a legend. And this is a nice one. I'm going to call it uh, going to call this one near mint in box to like new with just look like it's been used much to me even I couldn't even find really any rubs on the polished surfaces of the liners so it hasn't been carried around very much it's discontinued it's out of stock in this condition hard to find one for under 200 bucks in the eBay completed listing section but this one uh, Merry Christmas to you guys yeah Merry freaking Christmas 160 no how about 150? 150. 150. Are you kidding me? 175 if you like it with my edge on it. On the Gail Bradley from Spider Co. Next up, it's another black, red, silver, gold, and white Spider Co. box. This is the Sliver Axe. And you know, this knife, I, I don't know that I warmed up to it when I first handled one, but I've, I think I've sold three or four on the sale. And I grabbed this one and I went, man, I, I misjudged this knife. It's really pretty doggone nice. You just have to get used to putting a little forward tension on that blade. Uh, so here's the deal, guys. I think this is designed by the same guy that did the Spyderco Jr. So it's got that super deep finger area in the front of the handle, self-guarded. Then you got the flipper. Um, so they've done a ball bearing flipper with a compression lock. So, you know, compression locks don't have super robust frame lock type detents. Um, so the flipping takes a little bit of training of your muscles, I guess. Um, but it's really a pretty neat knife. Your hand is so well protected in the handle. The blade presents downward into the work. Uh, it's sort of a, a modified spidey leaf. Looks like some Ed Shemp might have designed. Um, 3 and 3 eighths is your blade length. S30V is your steel. 4 and 5 eighths handle with the newer texture carbon fiber over G10. More aggressive textured laminate from Taichung. You got your deep carry paper clip clip, reversible left or right. Um, a lot of guys say you can't close the knife because the flipper hits your finger, so you can't swing it closed. As long as you keep your finger to the back end of the uh, finger relief and don't hit your table when you're closing it, you can close it just fine. There. Even if you're left-handed using a knife right-handed. Uh, so the sliver axe, by the way, this one is like new in the box. Perfect centering, perfect lockup. Like new and map pricing on this knife. If you go to the web to buy one from your favorite retailer, you're going to find them for 178. This one can be yours. 120, 120 and 140 if you'd like it with an Apostle P Edge, which can be done tomorrow, Friday the 26th, if it's one of the first six knives purchased to be sharpened tonight. That's the Sliver X from Spyderco. Next up, I had one of these. I sold one of these. I wished I hadn't. Save me from myself, guys. Save me from myself. Another Spyderco. This one is the Cali 3.5 in carbon fiber and ZDP 189 laminate. Here you go. The three and a half inch version of the Cali. You have that beautifully finished carbon fiber. That beautifully hafted Seki City profile. Buttery smooth. The midlock backlock with the boy dent. Centering is really close to perfect. It might favor the right as you're looking at it ever so slightly. Lock up rock solid. 
that that ZDP 189 is clad with 420 J2. You can see the laminating demarcation line. I think I just cut myself. Wow. Pretty nice factory spider co edge. Condition on this one is near mint to like new. I really couldn't find a mark on it. Uh, it's discontinued and out of stock. eBay prices on these knives, uh, and they were they were in a variety of conditions, but I found them in completed listings between 135 and 209. This is a super fine example in new condition. Can be yours for 150, 150, and then 170 if you like it with an Apostle P edge. Next day sharpening available if it's one of the first six. That's the Cali 3.5 Carbon Fiber ZDP. Next up, a Nudden from Spyderco. And we're going to travel from Japan back to Taiwan for a minute for the original ball bearing flipper from Spyderco. The plain basket weave domino. Yeah, this thing is sort of becoming an icon. I believe. Uh huh. They're discontinued. They're out of stock everywhere. I love that freaking argyle sock weave and that carbon fiber over G10 laminate. You got your sort of blasted and tumbled finish on the frame lock side. PVD coated hourglass clip. Stupendous flipping action for a domino. I mean, one of the best I've ever handled. Robust detent, smooth bearings, shakes closed. A lot of dominoes don't. Blade centering is perfect. Lockup is perfect. Blade steel, of course, CTS XHP. Other than my fingerprints, it's pretty doggone unmolested. Do have some very slight trailing around the clip on that titanium. Not a big deal. So yeah, they're discontinued. They're out of stock. In this condition, which is extremely nice. Can't speak for the action and the mechanics, but I found them selling between 140 and 185 on eBay. Completed listings. I don't think you can buy a better one than this mechanically. And you can have it at the bottom of that range. 140, like it is. 160, if you like it with an Apostle P edge. Next day sharpening is available if it's one of the first six this week. That's the Spider Co. Domino. Next up, here's another knife I don't think I've given enough respect over the years from Spider Co. This is going to be the Kiwi 4 in G10. So they've made a lot of iterations of the Kiwi, and I've always kind of looked at it and went, meh. But I grabbed this one this week. It's been a long time since I had one in hand. And I went, why do I not love this knife? Uh, it's so cool. You got your 50-50 uh, forward finger choil. A deeply grooved handle. Super secure. Super slicey, sticky Warncliffe blade in VG10. Two and 15 sixteenths is your blade length backed up with a 3 and 7 8 inch handle. It's the Seki City Midlock Lockback with that gorgeous, gorgeous Seki City hafting. They do such a nice job. Rock solid lock. Oh, you know what? There's actually the slightest bit of vertical play in this knife. Beautiful centering. We'll call it near mint to like new in box. It's discontinued and out of stock. eBay completed listings. The Kiwi 4 is running between 125 and 180 on eBay. Actual transactions. This Sal Glesser Design Beauty can be yours for 130, 130, and 150 if you'd like it with an Apostle P Edge. Next day sharpening is available if it's one of the first six knives purchased to be sharpened this week. The Kiwi 4 from Spyderco. Next. 
again, save me from myself, a tiny Spyderco box. Inside it comes a Chaparral FRN from Taichung in an original pattern of the FRN for the Chappie. Look at that little beauty. That is some luxurious looking plastic, I think. A great idea for this knife. The Chaparral, a super thin, super slicey, super light knife, even in its original form. And then you go to the FRN scales. Man, it weighs nothing. You got your deep carry paper clip clip. Midlock lock back. Beautiful action. Rock solid lock up. I think the centering is perfect, it is. And it's like new in the box. Map pricing on this knife, you buy it from your favorite web retailer, brand new, is going to be $96. Or you can just buy this one, and it's a perfect example. $75 shipped to you, priority mail, or $95 if you like it with my edge on it. And you can have that done by tomorrow, Friday the 27th. I keep saying 26, but I believe it's the 27th. Yeah. If it's one of the first six. If it's outside the first six, be about four weeks for sharpening. That's the Chaparral FRN from Spyderco. What a beauty. Okay, this next one, guys, is the most special knife in the sale. From the Queen Cutlery Company comes a certificate of authenticity and the knife will follow uh, as you know you traditional pocket knife collectors Queen Cutlery Company is now extinct in its later years it was owned by Ken Daniels and his family the C of A is signed by Kenneth R Daniels so this knife was produced under the DFC or Daniels Family Family Cutlery trademark. It is a Shat and Morgan model 08 Warncliffe in Sambar Stag. Notice this model in Stag is limited to one piece. One piece. It is a one of one. Comes in an unassuming Shatton Morgan box. And here's the knife. It's sort of a, a short, stubby, curved trapper handle. Three and eleven sixteenths closed length, so it's not exactly short. Keystone shield, two beautifully matched pieces of stag. Give you a profile shot. Nickel silver bolsters and end caps. Brass liners. And then that. I do not have documentation for the steel type on this knife. Um, I don't know. Give a quick little wipe. Notice factory sample etched on the pile side. And then you have your Shatton Morgan etch on the mark side. There's your Shatton Morgan tang stamp. And then on the back, the DFC, Queen DFC tang stamp. It is a cam tang knife, and it's robust. Seven and a half, probably, on your pull weight. Now, although this is a beautiful example of a late model Shatton Morgan, it does let you know that it's a queen because the centering is off to the left. That's just part of its charm. A collection piece, guys. One of one in the final days of Queen. C of A signed by Ken Daniels. The Shatton Morgan number 08 Warncliffe in Sambar Stag. Uh, your price, and by the way, the original owner paid $250. Uh, it can only go up. But you're going to pay $225. i am not going to sharpen this knife. It needs to go away. It needs to be tucked away in somewhere safe and warm and dry. $225 is your price. 
Next up, to the more pedestrian end of the traditional slip joint pocket knife world, from Great Eastern Cutlery, Titty Cutlery, we have a number 381117. That is the GEC 38 Special in Tractor Green Jig Bone. Tractor Green. Tractor Green. What tractors are green, guys? I have no, no idea. Uh -huh. Here you go. Oh, 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 I love the plain bolsters and end caps on the 38 pattern. The Titty 8 Shield, and then you have your sort of Randall Model 3 clip point. A little humpback clip point. I love it, I love it, I love it. Guys don't dig it. I don't know why. 1095, of course. 3 and 7 eighths inches is your closed length. It is a cam tang knife, about a six pull. I'm not going to say perfect walking top, but it's pretty good. Doesn't quite snap shut like I'd like it to, but there's your blade centering. It's right down the middle. Condition on the 38 special. Near mint in tube, only some storage scuffing on the nickel silver. Your price on this one? 50 bucks. If you wanna if you're new to the slip joint pocket knife world, you want to see what GEC is all about without paying a huge price of admission. What a great one to add or start your collection with. The 38 special from GEC. 50 bucks like it is, 65. If you'd like an Apostle P edge on it, next day sharpening is available if it's one of the first six tonight. Next up. Going back to 2019, way back in 2019, Tidyuk Cutlery from GEC. We have, I think, their, their most awesome creation in 2019. The number 933119er, that's the 93 Ram Foot in natural canvas micarta. I love this knife. Oh. That canvas has got some character, boys, and it'll only get better as you use it. When GEC does natural canvas, they do satin finish on the hardware, so the nickel silver has a has a satin, as does the hot dog shield. 1095 blade with the sort of flaring sheep's foot, thus the ram foot. Triple P etch on the pile side, that's Patty's Potato Peelers. Or some like to say pattern production premier. That ram foot blade is backed up by a handle with a little bit of sway back action. Three and seven eighths inches is your closed length. Seven pull. Perfect walking top. Perfect centering. We'll call it near mid end tube with just the normal storage swirls and slight yellowing of the nickel silver that you get when you have that satin finish. Your price on this one, a beautiful example. $100. One zero zero, and then 115 if you'd like it with an Apostle P Edge. Next day sharpening available if it's one of the first six tonight. That's the GEC Tidy number 93 Ram Foot. Next up. Uh oh, uh oh. From Great Eastern Cutlery's line of Northfield Premium Pocket Knives, we have a number 772119er Yankee Barlow in natural linen micarta. Comes with the 77 Yankee Barlow button. Oh, and it comes with a pocket knife. Oh my. Guys, look at that linen. It's absolutely stunning. Now, I think this is kind of a special knife because, of course, Mike Latham, CollectorKnives.net, special factory order. And in past years, when you've seen liners that weren't brass, the knives were all steel. This one has nickel silver bolsters, nickel silver liners, and then the steel spring. I think you can see the color difference. 
between the liners and the spring. I think that's kind of neat. Uh, so it's all, sort of all one color, but sort of not. Nickel silver liners, pretty cool. And then you've got the single sheep's foot blade. And Mike knows how to do, he knows how to style a blade. Cut swedge, long match striker pull, satin finish, no etch except on the pile side. He's selling out. Get the CK logo on the pile side, not on the mark side, on the pile side. Mike Latham goes commercial. Let's see. We're saying seven pull. Perfect walk and talk. Perfect centering. Condition uh, like new in the tube. Your price, two fifty. Two hundred fifty dollars. Two hundred fifty big ones. 265 with an Apostle P Edge, next day sharpening available if it's one of the first six. That's the number 77 Yankee Barlow from GEC. Next up, another one of those Northfield Premium Pocket Knives from Great Eastern Cutlery. This one is a 35 Churchill, model number 351217 in Hummingbird Acrylic. I don't know that I've ever seen hummingbird acrylic up close before, but oh my. Oh. Wow. So the 35 is a cigar pattern. Northfield trimmed. It gives you the lined nickel silver bolsters. Cloud shield. Gorgeous clip point. The newer style Northfield Edge cut swedge long pull. And then it is a cigar frame, equal end, opposite end jack. So the pivots are on opposite ends, and you get a little stubby, robust sheep's foot secondary. Nice snap on a cam tang. I did see a little bit of evidence of rub from a liner, I think. On the sheep's foot, which you know, on a on a center linerless, congressed opposite end, you're gonna get that. Condition on this one, I would say, is near mint in tube, just just storage wear. Six and a half pull, I would say. Maybe a seven, six and a half. Beautiful walk and talk for a GEC cam tank. 120 is your price, and then 145 if you'd like both blades sharpened by the Apostle P Knife Service. Next day sharpening is available. If it's one of the first six this week, about four weeks out if you're outside that first six. That's the number 35 Churchill from Great Eastern Color. Next up, I'm running a couple of my knives, boys. Yeah, I bought a watch last night. So a couple of mine are going bye-bye. First up, at the tail end of our traditional pocket knife segment, we have a lion steel with no labels on the box. Yeah. This was one Mike Latham plucked out for me. <laughs> yeah, this is the Mike Latham designed collector knives exclusive clip shuffler from lion steel so you got natural micarta canvas micarta covers titanium bolsters beautifully crowned liners and back spring an m390 blade popping out of that three and eleven sixteenths frame gorgeous clip point cut swedge semi-long pull on both sides Oh, yeah, and it's wearing an Apostle P Edge. Oh. Nice walk and talk for a non-traditional traditional. Of a seven pull. Perfect centering. Near mint, in box, with my edge on it. It's a nice one. Uh, time to go. 130, somebody gets a deal. 130 with an Apostle P Edge on the Lion Steel Clip Shuffler. 
Next up, another one of mine. I just have too many fixed blades this size. Something has to go. And I bought a watch last night. From True Saber Knives. Sharp is good. Todd Wilinski. We have his Ottawa in CPM 154. Hmm. Hmm. Do I like that steel? Hmm. Yeah, three and a quarter inch blade. Seven and a quarter inch overall length with Coca Bolo scales and black liners. Oh, man. Comes in a gorgeous little convertible sheath. Can be done horizontal or vertical. Set up for a right hander. And here's the Ottawa. Can you tell that Todd learned to make knives from Mike Stewart? Yes, you can. It is a nearly full height but high saber convex with a convex edge. And yeah, the edge is mine. Oh. That thing's a razor. It's a razor. Uh -huh. There's the gorgeous Coca Bolo. The black liner is just adding a little bit of pop. Guys, if you've never had a True Saber in your hand, uh, uh, Bill Moran's got nothing on Todd Walensky. Uh, condition on this knife is going to be near mint in box, got an Apostle P edge on it. Your price, 145. 145 for the True Saber Ottawa. Next up, it is a real beast from Zero Tolerance Knives. We have a Zero 920 Blue Black designed by Les George. This is a cool knife. Don't know if I've seen it. Have, have I had one of these before? I don't know. Look at that. Gorgeous, sort of, uh, sort of a slate blue anno on that finely milled crown titanium handle. Gorgeous black hardware. The blue and the black work so nicely. Yeah. That is a five inch handle. Out of it flies a three and seven eighths inch distinctly less George Harpoon recurve blade steel CPM 20 CV three and seven eighths inches awesome it's pointy it's sticky it's slicey it's got a recurve of course you got a steel inserted titanium frame lock there's your lockup there's your action there's your centering it's perfect beautifully designed flipper great job less whack everything is beautiful about this knife and no death lock fingers on lock bar whack oops gotta get past the detent condition I'm gonna say it's like new in the box it is discontinued well map pricing on this knife was 260 there's one site that has a couple left and they've got them on clearance at 220. This one, just as nice as those, shipped priority mail 190, 190, and then 220 if you like it with an Apostle P edge. Next day sharpening is available if it's one of the first six this week. If you're outside the first six, it's going to be about four weeks. That's the ZT0920BLUBLK. Next up. Oh, man, what a knife. Black box from Benchmade. Inside lives a 3300 DLC-1802. This was one of those anniversary sort of configurations, I think, for the Infidel. Got that gorgeous green hard anodized aluminum handle the deep carry infidel clip that is well it doesn't need to be reversible because the knife is totally uh symmetrical you have your side mounted double action out the front button with you know nobody's got better button action on and out the front than bench made it will not wear you out 
you have that gorgeous dagger ground blade this one in S30V not D2 and you know there's something Benchmade has that little sense of sarcasm look at the fuller and look at the base of the fuller I'm just saying <laughs> Even if you left yours at home, your out the front stabber has testicles. I'm just saying. Condition on this one's like new in the box. Uh, three and seven eighths inch double edge blade, five inch handle. It's been 100% reliable before I turned the camera on and since. Like new in the box map pricing on this knife, it is still available online. Four thirty-eight. This one can be yours for three fifty, three five zero, and then three eighty. If you'd like me to sharpen it, you don't want me to sharpen it. Just go stick things with it; it'd be fine. Next up. Oh, it's one of those boxes. Gee, nobody wants any of these, do they? Inside, we have a Socom Elite Single Edge Standard Two Tone. I just love these knives. This is a manual action Microtech. Hard anodized black aluminum handle. Track tech inserts. So well done. Tip down right hand carry. Nice detent. Ball bearing pivot. Great flicking action. The blade on the SOCOM is four inches in length. This one in Bowler M390. Satin flats. Sort of a finely tumbled DLC bevel and swedge. There's your lock engagement. <laughs> oh, perfect centering. Condition on this one, I think it's like new. I don't think I could find a blemish on it. You might, but it'll be a tiny one. <clears throat> let's see web pricing on this knife 300 bucks when they're in stock and they ain't they're gone uh, M390 your price 240 240 and 265 if you'd like it to come to you with an Apostle P edge you can have that done by tomorrow Friday if you're one of the first six to purchase a sharpened knife tonight but four weeks if you're not that's the Microsoft Microsoft. That is the Microtech SOCOM Elite SE. Really? Did he just say Microsoft and a knife video? Come on. Next up, another one from Microtech in the new claw box. This is a model I've never had in my hand. It's the Duroc D. E standard double edge Duroc. What a cool knife. If you like the UTX 70 and 85, but <clears throat> you don't like the spine mounted button, here you go. Or if you're a lefty and you don't want to move a clip to the side that should be the show side, yeah, here you go. Side mount button, symmetrical dagger blade. Satin flats, DLC fuller and bevels. So the Duroc, if that's how you say it, is CTS XHP, two and seven eighths inches of blade, four inches of handle. That's plus the glass breaker. Medium button effort, one hundred percent reliable. This one was made just last December, December of 2019, which I believe is in the in the swale of the clip. Might be hard to make out from the lighting. Okay. Really, really cool. Uh, let's see. I did find these in stock at some web retailers for 280. This one can be yours for 220, 220. Not going to sharpen it. Silly to sharpen it. It's a letter opener or a pig sticker. 220 for the Duroc. Next up, we're going to finish with some knives from Heretic Knives. And they're pretty cool, I got to tell you. 
So I believe the boys from Heritech were former Microtech employees. So everything kind of looks Microtech-y. Box looks kind of Microtech-y. Sticker is in the right place for Microtech. Look at that. This is the Heretic Knives H034-6A. We'll call it the Butcher Auto. A collaboration with Andre de Uh-huh. Aluminum, DLC, flame titanium, and carbon fiber hardware. What? Yeah. No kidding. So look at this thing. Clearly an ADV tactical butcher design, right? Oh my, but just let's just look. Titanium pivot hardware, and look at the hand flamed anno. Look at the deployment button. Look at the checkered carbon fiber. Look at the sort of black wash clip with roller engagement. Are you kidding me? Let's just thwack this big old sheep's foot out of here. Uh huh. Blade steel on the auto butcher is S35VN. DLC finish. Four inches of blade, gorgeous fuller, gorgeous swedge. The handle's five and a sixteenth. And this knife, although it's hefty, it's light, man. Because, you know, the aluminum, which is already pretty light, is milled out to accommodate the carbon fiber scales, which is even lighter. The only thing that weighs anything is the blade. Nice action, rock solid lockup. Dead nuts centering condition. On the butcher is like new in the box. New web pricing for this knife was four sixty, and guys, it it merits it. Um, but you know, Heretic isn't Microtech, so it's not going to cost you four hundred bucks. How about three twenty for the auto butcher? Three forty with my edge on it. Next day sharpening available if it's one of the first six tonight. About four weeks if it's not. Next up, now this little knife, I, I spent some time with it, and the more I handled it, the more I loved it. This is the second of three Heretic knives tonight. This is the H025-6A BRKRD, what? The Manticore S Recurve DLC in Breakthrough Red. Yeah, a lot going on in that label, but here's a sweet little knife. Again, if you're a UTX fan, this is so cool. So it's got a hard anodized aluminum handle. I think what they've done is they've hard anodized it red and then they've dropped a little DLC on it and then thrown it in the stone washer or something like that. Thus, breakthrough red. Uh -huh. That is a super cool finish and I bet it's going to be really durable. You got a deep carry clip and so you got you have a four inch handle out from which ejects a 2 and 9 16 blade, S35VN, DLC coated, nice little recurve, reinforced point. It's stabby, but you could still open the mail with it. How about that? And it's going to sit down deep in your pocket, so it's not going to scare the farm animals and the white people, so to speak. Pretty cool. Condition is like new in the box. By the way, medium button effort, 100% reliable. You might have a little shiny spot in the DLC just from opening and closing, but there you go. That's the Manticore S from Heretic. Uh, they're out of stock. When they were in stock, web price was $265. This one can be yours. Why? Because it's not a Microtech. For $190. And then 215 if you like it with an Apostle P edge. That's the Manticore S from Heretic. Okay, this the last knife, and this is the last knife in the sale. We ran, I think, four weeks ago, and the same consigner was sending more. Rather than run it a second consecutive week, we decided to hold it back until this batch arrived, and you'll see how this makes sense. It's a Heretic. This is the h 036 64 FTI Tenshi recurve in DLC. Now this is not an auto knife. This is a ball bearing flipper 
And, you know, Heretic manages to have a whole lot going on without being silly. You've got a carbon fiber scaled liner lock with an overlay of hand flame titanium, a custom stylized pivot, and then look at this. Oops, you got to flip it, Rob. <coughs> There's your DLC coated blade. S35VN. It's a recurve Tonto. Two and a half inches in length. Three and three quarters inch handle. Really, really nice in hand. The pinky wraps onto that sloped butt nicely. The pinky wraps onto the sloped butt. Now, who writes this copy? A really, really cool knife from Heretic. Um, by the way, it's like new in the box. Flipping action is perfect. Lockups rock solid. Centering looks to be right down the middle. One site has this knife left in stock for $385. We ran this a month ago at $295, got no takers. On Saturday, we reduced the price to $270, got no takers. This week, somebody gets to steal it. $220, $220. And the 250 if you like my edge on it before it ships. And that can be done tomorrow if it's one of the first six knives purchased to be sharpened tonight. About four weeks if it's not. That is the Tenshi from Heretic Knives. And that brings us to the end of another knife extravaganza on the Apostle P channel. Grace to you and peace, my friends. Remember the word is sharp. During this trying time of the coronavirus pandemic, Extend the peace, the love of the Lord Jesus Christ to everyone you meet and go serve your king.